Well, it's wonderful to be here in Bangor again after all these years. What I'm amazed at is that we're sitting on the stage of an organization that started 40 years ago. And in the arts, to achieve 40 years is something amazing. Uh, but it shouldn't surprise people that this can happen in Bangor. Bangor has been supportive in the arts for 200 years. People who have a legacy in the timberlands north of here support the arts in Bangor, and it's a heck of a lot cheaper than going to Boston or Portland. I was amazed to learn that a quarter of a mile from here down on the stream in Norabega Hall, Edwin Booth, America's foremost actor, came to Bangor and played his Hamlet. If that doesn't show that the people here are willing to support the arts, nothing does. Anyway, my congratulations to you, Barry. <laughs> it's been, um, I am very humbled to be in your presence. To know and uh, now meet you that you're truly a legend of the American theater, truly. Um, and I don't know if you know this, but Penobscot Theater is so known nationally. Um, almost everybody that I meet in wherever I'm at in my life, in California, in Atlanta, in Florida, everybody's heard of Penobscot Theater Company. Everybody who's been in theater for you know at least the last 20, 30, 40 years know about it as this kind of beacon up there in Bangor. And to meet the person responsible for this place that I too had heard of in my travels, where I'm now um, so privileged to be to meet you is uh, a very special moment in my personal life so thank well you. you're patting me on the back so much I, it, it makes me blush uh, one of the things that happened though is that after 16 years of working hard starting from zero winding up owning our own building and creating our own fate when I decided it was time to move on we got applications from 125 young artistic directors wanting my job. <laughs> Out of nowhere. Yeah. So I guess that's some kind of testament to success. Yeah, and also, uh, you know, to think that um, this organization is considered a venerable institution in this town. You know, right up there with the library. Um, as fortunately and unfortunately as something that people take for granted as being here. To meet the person and Lord knows I know what it is to, to start a theater company. You didn't start just this one, you started two others that are still going. This is astounding. <laughs> I'm curious as to what's the same. Is there any thread of Penobscot Theater Company that remains? Well, it was a tremendous learning curve for me. I was an actor for 20 years. All of a sudden, I was in charge of a company. And the first and most important lesson that I learned is to venerate my community, to know who they are, how they react, how far I can push them, how I can turn to them in times of crisis, and make sure that they feel ownership of this organization. That means success to me. That's yeah. the biggest lesson. Someone once said to me at a big, big theater in a big city, they said, Barry, every theater is a community theater. And, uh, you know, I've seen it work uh, completely in the other way when I've been in a community where it's like, wow, you got this great theater and the theater doesn't look at the community as a resource. You know, either because they're programming for a New York audience, in their minds anyway, or um, they're just not in tune and not out there. Um, yes. Even watching how you interacted with the audience today was um, really enlightening. A lot of, you know, artistic directors feel uncomfortable talking about money. Feel uncomfortable asking for money. It's a very important point. As an actor, I was uncomfortable. As a producer and an artistic director, it was either get money or starve. Exactly. So you learn how to get money. In a gracious way, in a thankful way, but because donating reinforces the idea that you value something, and 
that you're also creating a legacy for your children and their children. Exactly. Who thought in 1974 that we'd be sitting on a stage 40 years later with a wholly different generation out there? The people I de dealt with, many of them have passed, unfortunately. But you have generation after generation after generation. I had a young man come to me and show me his design portfolio. And I said, wow, I'm impressed. And you're from Dover, Foxcroft, and you've got this wonderful talent here. How did that happen? He said, I came to your theater and saw Hamlet, Othello, and Julius Caesar, and I was hooked. From Dover, Foxcroft. That was why we were around. The theater acts as an ambassador for a community. There are hundreds and thousands of communities in a in 200 mile radius that don't have a theater and they say we go to Bangor. This is Bangor's theater. Occasionally, I mean, we, we put stuff in a truck and took it to Pittsfield and Ellsworth and Fort Kent and uh, so many places and people said, oh, you, you come out of Bangor, that's fabulous. And there's no doubt that something like a professional, regular theater enhances the quality of life. People in Maine always bring guests up in January, I mean, uh, in June, July, or August, and they take their guests to the theater. And they're very proud of the theater because they have supported it, because their children have come home with brochures after participating in a program here, and because they feel like this is their organization. And once you achieve that, you're on the road to success, you know. Uh, people stop me in the bank and tell me what they hated about the show they didn't like, and I thank them for it, because they care and because they feel it's, they've got a stake in the organization. So that's, uh, that, that's really what, what an audience can do. They can be proud of their theater, and they can let you know what they don't like when they don't like it, and you can take it uh, for what it's worth. Pastina Playhouse had an interesting thing. It was, um, and I, I think it was something that was started way back, but that was continued to be honored now. And that was anyone who gave $10,000 or more Got a got a season subscription for their children, their grandchildren's children. Uh, it was uh, like a uh, legacy, uh, like your family forever. Has, yeah. yeah, and it was so interesting because every once in a while, I'd hear in the box office, you know, one of these grand or great grandchildren call up, you know, with this thing, this very special thing, and. Uh, you know, to me, you know, like we were talking the other night, you know, bringing kids here not, not only does what we consider the obvious, which is helps problem solve, open their minds to all kinds of questions and, um, you know, obviously it works their imaginations and problem solving and empathy, and, but it also creates the next generation of philanthropists, you know, of people who understand, you know, why it's important to be here, why this ancient art form hasn't succumbed and won't succumb to television. Why it's like church, you know? Yeah, well, there's the connection. Uh, it, there's not a machine, there's not a camera. There is a connection. Performer, audience, script, stage. It's as old as mankind. You know, the first storyteller was a, an actor. And one of the wonderful things is that is this kind of an organization can have people bring their families so that you have multi, multiple generations enjoying the same product. Not only does that enrich their relationship and their lives, but it makes theater goers of tomorrow right there. And that's huge, that legacy. Yes. Yeah. And uh, you know, I, I, I've, I've known you now for about 12 hours. <laughs> and I feel very confident that the theater is in good hands and I wish you the best. Thanks. Mm.